What is going on guys? Welcome to the Traveling Crypto. Let us get into the market update for today. Actually, before that, if you are not yet subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell that lets you know every single time that I post new content. All right, right into it. So the market cap is 436 billion. Uh, BTC's dominance is not much changed uh, at 36.4%, a little higher than it was yesterday. Uh, going into Bitcoin, let us take a look at some technicals. So there are a few things to, to note here that are interesting. Um, the first thing that, that popped out at me is this divergence between the price and the RSI. We've talked about this before, but you know, depending on whether we're talking about the lows or the highs between the price and the RSI, it could mean different things. In this case, we made a lower high on the RSI and a higher high on the price. This usually indicates a bearish divergence. So that either means that we are uh, going you know, declining in the near term or will be trading sideways for a while. It definitely does not indicate strength or any sort of upwards momentum. And you could see that shortly after that bearish divergence, we did take a, a slight dip and we are now retracing back to previous levels. Um, if you saw my video from yesterday, you'll see that this Fibonacci uh, retracement was flipped, meaning that the one or the 100% was at the top and the zero was at the bottom. Now, why do we do this? Um, you know, why do we have different orientations uh, of the Fibonacci retracement? And it's because it depends on what you're trying to measure. As I said before, you can have multiple Fibonacci retracements on the same chart, uh, depending on what you are trying to read and what you're trying to measure. In this case, I want to see what the extent of this pullback will be. So it seems that the bulls have topped out at around 9,900. That was the high, the recent swing high, which happened four or five days ago. So that is where I set my zero level. And at the bottom, the 100% is the most recent low before this rally here, which was at around $6,500, $6,600. Um, so what I'm trying to measure is how far down Bitcoin is willing to retrace uh, before you know finding support. And in this case, it looks like it's bouncing off this 0.236 level um, at around 9,100. We did fall below, but we haven't closed below. Uh, we fell to a low of, according to this, uh, around 8,900 and eighty dollars today um, we are also bouncing off of the 100 day moving average which is this green line right here this navy line is the 20 day moving average so it looks like they are converging uh it's kind of hard to see here let's see if i can zoom in um so i apologize i have too too many things going on at the screen at once so this navy line here is the 20 day this green is the 100 day uh, so it's good to see we want the shorter increments to move above the longer term increments, right? That shows a, a sign of, of momentum, which is essentially what the, the MACD is, right? So when the 12 is above the 26, that shows a sign of strength. When it dips below like it is here, um, that shows a possible sign of upcoming momentum loss. So the we are above the 20 and the 100 day and the 20 is actually converging above the 100 day, which is a good sign and you see these candles bouncing off of these two moving averages um, as well as this 0.236 fib level that's you know that to me that indicates along with um, the divergence the bearish divergence between the rsi and the price that signals to me that we are probably going to be trading sideways for a while maybe dipping back down if we fall below this 0.236 fib level we will find support somewhere between the 0.382 fib level and uh the 50 day moving average which is this red line right here all right let us take a look at ethereum real quick so ethereum we did have a rally starting at around april 6th april 7th that was the start of this rally right here and again we are seeing a, a pullback in the same way that that bitcoin is uh behaving and so back to the same fibonacci where we set the zero at the recent swing high which was at around 820 dollars the recent swing low before the rally was at a, a measly 367 dollars i did send out several trade alerts a while back saying that i was going to buy the dip and it was somewhere around here uh as btc as uh ethereum 
uh, was was looking like it was breaking out of this rally. Again, if you want to subscribe to the trade alerts, the Patreon is in the description. The trade alerts are sent on the Discord. Uh, here are some of the older trade alerts that we have sent out. They are mostly daily unless we are in a situation where uh, I feel that you know, holding or, or, or standing by on the sidelines and waiting to see waiting to see breakouts uh, is the best way to, to move forward. So uh, again, link is in the description. Sign up for the trade alerts. Okay, back to Ethereum. Similar situation with Ethereum. It is bouncing off the 0.236 Fib level. Uh, as you can see, these long wicks here extending down to around the 0.236 level of $715. It is finding support there, but we see the same bearish divergence on the RSI. So here is a high and here is a lower high. And if you look at the price, starting at the same exact point, here you have a high and here you have a higher high on the price. So that indicates a bearish divergence, which again means that there isn't upward momentum in the near term. And we might either, you know, trade sideways for a few days or, or a few weeks, who knows? or fall or continue to, to retrace back to previous support levels. All right, let's move on to EOS real quick. EOS is interesting, breaking all-time highs recently. We did sign out multiple trade alerts for EOS, booking double-digit profits multiple times. So with EOS, the divergence between the price and the RSI is quite the opposite. We see that the RSI made a lower low, the price made a higher low. That is called a hidden bullish divergence, which is a good sign moving forward. Um, we do see the retracement again from this all-time high point. I, I drew this as a possible uh, Elliott wave, uh, Elliott impulse wave formation, uh, which could still take effect, which could still be in effect, right? Um, it just really depends on on this this four the the fourth wave here. If we do retrace back down to levels, I would say you know below the two three six, closer to the point three eight two level or below, then I would have to redraw this this fourth wave here, this fourth point. But either way, EOS there are. A ton of bullish signs on EOS besides this this divergence that we see. Um, it is currently bouncing off, you know, all kinds of, of EMAs. Here you have the 20 in the navy blue, uh, the 50 is the red, the, the 100 is the green, the 200 is this royal blue here, uh, which is short because obviously, you know, this only goes back to October 2017 on, on Binance. So we don't have a lot of 200 day information. We only started collecting 200 days, obviously, after we had 200 days of trading. Nonetheless, it is still trading above all three comfortably. There is an upward slope, uh, which is a, a bullish bias on, on all three EMAs. Um, again, it is not, we did fall below the, the 0.236. So unlike uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, we did fall below it just slightly, but it is bound, it looks to be bouncing more off of the 20 day EMA. Uh, we do expect it to break all time highs again. This has you know, a little bit to do with the technicals that I'm presenting here and some to do with the fundamentals. Obviously, EOS is planning on launching their mainnet June 2nd. If we take a look at the volume, it's nothing alarming, really. I mean, yeah, we do see some of these tall red bars. That just indicates a, bound, uh, a bout of uh, profit taking from reaching all-time highs. That's understandable. I mean, that's something that, that I did as well, right? So once we hit these all-time highs, obviously, you expect people to take profits, um, not really, you know, putting so much confidence into EOS or any security for that matter, remaining stagnant at these all-time highs. You always do see a pullback, right? Even Bitcoin, when it hit the 20K, it's not going to stay at 20. There is going to be a peak um, where most of the traders feel like they need to take profits or they're satisfied with taking profits. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there, we can't see growth from there. It just means that we have to retrace a little before moving back up. Hence, this possible Elliott wave pattern. Looking at Zill real quick, uh, this is funny. I mean, this is going to be quick because there really isn't any technical analysis you can do on this. It hasn't been uh, live on the market for very long, uh, only since March 5th. And you have this, you know, parabolic, ridiculous run up. Uh, it's basically showing is oversold the whole time on the RSI. There really isn't much you can glean for this um, from this. The, the only thing I would say is 
or a couple of things I'd say. If you're going to enter Zill, it would be more of a gamble at this point, right? Since we don't really have any precedence to go off of. You could day trade uh, something like Zill, but you would need to look at a shorter increment, like a 30 minute or a 15 minute even. Um, or even if you look at the one minute, you'll see that uh, you might be able to catch some of these swings. Um, but, you know, again, I mean, it's, it's, it's a parabolically rising crypto that's only been on the market for a very short time. So there isn't much that, that you can glean from, from technicals. Uh, you certainly could, you know, put, put a position here. I would set an aggressive stop loss, uh, a very aggressive stop loss to catch any sort of uh, downtrend. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, you're, you're basically taking, taking a gamble on what the price normalization will be for, for Zill. Looking at some of the news in cryptocurrency, uh, this is an interesting one. Circle adds Monero to, to crypto investment app. There was some rumor earlier this year uh, that Coinbase might add Monero because it's it's lacking, you know, a, a privacy coin per se or a pure privacy coin. Um, that Coinbase would be adding Monero at some point in 2018. I don't know how founded those rumors are, but it's great to see it added to Circle. Uh, another news story, crypto exchange Coin Coin One taps Ripple for new remittance service. I believe this is in South Korea. Um, I do have a, a whole Ripple video coming out shortly, probably sometime this week, explaining why these deals, I mean, you see these like, you know, every day practically there's a, a new announcement that Ripple is partnering with some government or some corporation or some bank, um, but yet the price seems immovable, really. Um, and I do have a video explaining why that is. Look for that later this week, some point. The first version of Ethereum's Casper upgrade has been published. This is basically changing the way that Ethereum reaches consensus. This this has been a long time coming, so it's great to see that their you know their their active development is coming to fruition, and they're actually deploying versions or iterations of of this Casper upgrade this can only you know mean good things for for ethereum there was talk earlier this week about some possible sec meeting you know deeming ethereum as a security or not it turns out that that meeting was was more of a casual impromptu endeavor and wasn't really an official sec meeting um, i really haven't heard any news coming from that but uh it, it you know it wasn't as uh important as people people made it out to be i think that the sec and other regulatory bodies are going to be are, are taking a, a very careful approach as it relates to cryptocurrency and even to icos you see here there's a new story that was saying SEC commissioner cautions against blanket ICO classification. There is another news story saying that why the SEC should give amnesty to illegal ICOs. So even talking about ICOs that are clearly scams, this is a very interesting article, but it, it, it basically uh, maps out a plan or a possible plan that the SEC can take in order to curb illegal ICOs um, by providing amnesty and some sort of program uh, to bring ICOs into into the the legal fold, uh, I'll link this in the in the description. This can probably you know take a, an entire video to 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 explain and and dive and deep dive into. But the point is that the regulatory bodies are actually taking a more careful approach with cryptocurrencies and ICOs, which is great to see that that cooler heads are are prevailing here. So with regards to something like deeming you know Ethereum as a security or not overnight. Uh, it seems less likely that than an event like that will happen. All right, guys, that is it for this video. Go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Leave a comment and a thumbs up. I'll be doing a crypto giveaway at 20K. I still have a free ticket left for the Blockchain Connect Conference in Silicon Valley in June, June 26th and 27th, I believe. Subscribe to the Patreon for the trade alerts and the weekly report. Follow me on Twitter. I've actually been doing a really bad job of advertising my... Uh, my social media and i haven't been very active on social media i know that's terrible especially as a youtuber that's something that i'm supposed to do so um no i i do love twitter i i use it more to to consume content i don't really distribute but i i need to post on there more uh so follow me on twitter and encourage me to get more active on it i'll see you guys next time peace